Oh, don't do that. Oh my gosh. Alright guys, welcome to your spoiler alert. We are doing a special dinner and a movie. And I am teaching you guys how to make my family's version of rice pilaf. I can't remember if my mom said that this was a recipe you got off of the cans because back in the day they gave you recipes off of the cans or if this was uh, a family recipe. Either way, it doesn't matter. We are making it today. It is very basic, very simple, very good. So I got my little rice cooker here. You will need that for, of course, rice pilaf. And of course you don't need a rice maker and this is actually a very basic one. It has the keep warm and cook button. It is not like Uncle Roger's uh, where he has a bunch of different settings for a bunch of different things. Rice cooker is Uncle Roger's favorite thing. It is more so a run and gun quick rice cooker deal. So with that, let's jump into some of the things that we will need. And I am using some pure canola oil. I can show it to you from the side because of you know copyright. I don't have very much in here, but that is probably just enough for the meal that I am making. You'll need either one full stick, which equals about a cup of uh, margarine or butter, or this much canola oil it will do. Uh, if you have a little bit more, I would say one third to a half a cup of of either canola oil, um, I'm not sure about vegetable oil, uh, but uh, extra virgin olive oil will hit you up pretty good. Again, we have our rice maker and our rice lid. I will not show you the brand name, but it is a basic functioning rice cooker. Another thing that you will obviously need is a bag, a bag of rice. That is pretty obvious. We're using our store-bought brand basic white rice. Uh, nothing super special about it. It's, uh, I think, medium uh, length. So you can use long grain, uh, medium grain, doesn't really matter. Just don't use brown rice because brown rice will take either more of the liquids or more time to cook. We don't need to cook this meal long. We want to kind of just put it in, let it do its thing, and be done um be done with it um some other things that you will need and these are your ingredients is your good old french onion soup which this is a basic uh you know your basic soup french onion soup we have two cans of that and then we have two cans of beef broth i will put those down in the description and we will have um kind of the ounces and stuff in the description. Maybe I'll have it pop up down here for you so you guys know uh, basically how much. This is um, 10.5 ounces, and I believe the French onion is, uh, again, 10.5 ounces. So we are using four cans, two cans of the beef broth, two cans of the French onion, and then I gotta grab my secret ingredient. All right, guys, and our last ingredient is, well, sliced mushrooms. You probably know who uh, this guy is, but it is sliced mushrooms. I just get the regular sliced mushrooms. You can get the thinly chopped whatevers. I just don't suggest that you get whole mushrooms. No. <laughs> so we got that. What else will you need in besides your rice cooker you will need and this comes typically comes with this little guy is a plastic spoon i do highly suggest a plastic spoon not a metal spoon because you will start to rip off the teflon off of your rice cooker and that is no bueno okay so that is one thing that you will need and you will need a cup measure this is just your everyday ordinary cup maker uh, cup measure you want to use that to measure out the rice. We are going to do a two liquids to 
one cup of rice. So we have four liquids. That means that we're going to do two cups of rice that will substantially feed you and whoever you're feeding as long as it's one person um, by themselves. I eat this when I make it. I eat it over the span of a week for dinner and lunch and it lasts me for a couple of days. So uh, you're going to get a lot out of this meal. It will be more than sufficient for two people hands down. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our generic rice. We do not want to plug this one in just yet because, well, uh, it turns on as soon as you plug it in and starts heating. I don't want to do that quite yet, but we're going to do our rice first and pour that in. But actually, we're not going to do our rice first. We're going to do our oil first, a little bit of oil on the bottom of the pan. You don't have to use all of it. Um, whatever you measure out, um, you can pour out. If you're using a stick of butter, take the tip of the stick of butter, rub it around the bottom of the pan and the edges. That way nothing really sticks. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a little bit of this uh, pure canola oil into the thing. A little bit more. You want to kind of have a good thick layer on there. Now I'm just going to take the pan and swirl it around kind of like you would with a with a pan and then just make sure that that bottom is pretty coated with the oil and that will help your rice from sticking to the bottom it will also help uh, help prevent it from burning on the bottom and you can see that is all I am really doing is getting it on that bottom piece there. So that's fine. I'm going to put that back in here. Now we're going to take our measuring cup. We got our pot in the cooker. Make sure that your pot's in the cooker. Do not put your rice into the actual cooker. Put it in the pot. I know that sounds basic, but yeah, we're not going to go there. We got our medium grain rice here. And we are just going to pour that into this to measure it out because we don't want to overfill our rice maker with rice. We do want to have it at a proper thing. I think that looks about right. Should just pour it in there. You do want to kind of make it um, sorry, I didn't want to block up your ASMR experience here. I know some people like the ASMR. Um, you don't want to put all of the rice in one section. You kind of do want to spread it around quite a bit evenly so it distributes not just in one place. You do want more in the middle technically, but not all in just like one side on the edge. Now you will get a little bit of spreadage once we start pouring in the liquids. Not a big deal. Now we're going to pour the rest of our olive oil in there. You can either melt your butter or just throw it in. It's fine either way. And that's what I'm doing with this uh, canola oil. I do prefer uh, extra virgin olive oil, but it's pretty expensive now. Let's go, Brandon. And then we are going to do our, our beef broth. You will need a can opener, and I just happen to have one right here. Let's put this little clippy guy over here. And so... Let's put this guy up here so we don't have him in the way. We don't really need the lid right now. And we're going to open this beef broth. There is a little trick to beef broth. Because it is a liquid, you do not have to open up the full can. You just have to pop a small slit on the front and back of it to open up that airway. If you just open it up on one side, it will get jammed, and that's not fun. So we're just going to pour that right in there. Do kind of spread it around so all the grains get a little bit of it. They will after a while because we're using two. If you're only using one, make sure you definitely spread it around because you're only using one cup at a time. And that uh, doesn't really help out. So there we go. First can down. You can, I hope that you can recycle in your area if you can do so because, well, 
that technically helps the environment. I will not give you uh, any uh, points, but hey, if you can, do it, do it. We're gonna do the same thing with this second can. Just turn it there, give it a little pop, pop, and then a little bit of splish splash. You can see it just kind of flows. I don't know why anyone would want to hear that kind of ASMR, but okay. And now I will show you, once I turn my uh, non-sponsored products around, what it looks like. So, that is what it looks like. Looks pretty good so far. It looks just like a um, bubbling thing right now. Sorry about all that weird noise. Let's get you guys back into a position. There we go. Now you can do um, beef with this. Not a big deal. You can do beef. Um, I am not specifically doing beef for this one. I don't uh, need any more beef, but if I wanted to, I could throw in some, um, I, I use Beyond Beef, I use, you know, plant-based beef because it's a little bit better than actual hard beef because uh, the oils and things, not really good for me, being me. But more power to you if you wanna use beef, you can use bison, which is a leaner cut of beef. You can use the plant-based stuff. It doesn't have the, it has the same texture, but not the same taste. You can also do this with chicken broth and uh, chicken. That's perfectly fine too. Now on to our second part, which is the French onion soup. I say French onion soup because some people get French onion something else and it's really thick and not good. This is kind of a liquidy, um, liquid with onion in it it's a bit thick get those onions off of there because you really want to save as many onions as you can and then we're just going to pour you see it's a little bit i'll show you guys hold on let me get that little bit oh man come on it's it is very soupy but it, there's chunks of onion in there. So that is going to make this give it that real good extra bit of flavor. And you don't, um, this, uh, the beef broth, this is not a vegan or vegetarian meal whatsoever. You are using beef broth. So that is a disclaimer for you guys. Don't get mad at me. Hit me up in the comments though, because I want to know if you guys like what you're seeing so far. We got our second can of the French onion soup. The French onion soup. And of course the cans don't like me very much, but you know, I'm gonna try to not cut myself on these pull tab cans. Now this is making about six cups and you gotta, you're gonna get backsplash. That just happens. Um, you're gonna get right around six cups of liquid. That's okay because we're using two cups of, of the rice and that's um, so two, technically four cups, but this will make your rice really good because if you don't use four cans, for me at least, for this maker, I have found that if I don't use four cans of, of these guys, that um, it doesn't get as uh, soft as I want it to be. I like mine to be very soft, not not like a rice pudding, but not a chew, like not a crunch when I crunch down on it. So that really helps with this. Now here comes the optional thing for you guys. Always start putting away your stuff when you, as you do it, so that way you don't have to do it later. Come on guys. Come on, man. Come on, man. Now we have our, our sliced mushrooms. Now you can, don't have to use sliced mushrooms. I do suggest that you do use sliced mushrooms, 
but you can use chopped mushrooms, um, whatever mushrooms. You can get mushrooms out of water, in water. This just happens to be in water and you can get them in cans and different things. It doesn't matter whatsoever. I'm just going to open it and pour the whole thing in water and all because that's going to give it yet again another flavor. So just going to pour that in. Now you do want to get pretty low into to the thing here. Try and spread them around as they drop out. They are going to kind of clump out and backsplash on you so just be careful the closer to the liquid you are the less likely that is to happen and i know what you're going to say well do we mix them not yet we're going to let them all heat up once we come back for our check which i will show you we will have this um they will sit on the top then we're going to mix them up again when they're kind of liquidy but not um but it's still not a gelatinous mess yet. So, okay. And of course, our next step is we have our handy dandy spoon here. We have our, did not mean to do that. Our, um, our Ming Shift Shield. No, um, oh, hey, Ming Shift Shield, ha. I know, Captain's is better. It's okay, hit me up in the comments, it's fine. We got our lid on there. Got a little scratchy scratch on there. Don't tell Uncle Roger, just don't. This lid has a little filter hole so the steam will escape. And we will come back in a few minutes to check on it. When you start to smell it, come back and check on it. And when you hear it start to boil, come back because it's going to get into a very light to medium um, simmer you're going to want to come and stir it just so it doesn't burn on the bottom doesn't burn on the top you're going to want to come back and do that kind of a couple of times so with that being said let's jump into the movie portion of this and we will come back of course we're going to plug it in first now as soon as you plug it in it will have started you're going to push that down cooking good so let's jump into it Alright guys, we are going to be watching the one, the only, License to Wed. Yes. Uh, this movie's pretty funny. Uh, a lot of your um, Office alum are in this movie. Uh, when I first saw this movie, I wasn't a huge Office fan. Don't boo me in the comments. I like The Office now. I've seen The Office, um, all of The Office, quite a few times now. I just didn't know these guys were in that series, but now I do. So with that being said, I am going to be watching License to Wed. It has um, the main guy from The Office. It has Mandy Moore, uh, John Krasinski, Mandy Moore, and Robin Williams. So let's jump right into it. Here we go. Beautiful, isn't it? But let me tell you the truth. For a lot of people, marriage is like sticking your tongue on a frozen flagpole. Sure, it looks like fun when you see all your friends doing it, so you say, hey, I'll give it a try, just once. Next thing you know, you suck. <laughs> That's where I come in. Good marriages are my business. <laughs> John Krasinski, Andy Moore. <laughs> Whoops. The sweet innocence of the first date. Outside Chicago. Whoa. Whoops. Well, maybe we should go back and take care of first base just to make things right. Um, that works. The first time you say, I love you. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> what? Of you. What of you? The first time you say, I love you. She actually hears you. I love you. <laughs> the old man. I'm afraid you're not my type. <laughs> okay. You seriously didn't think I was gonna let you see that. No, oh, I didn't seriously think you were gonna let me see that. Together. The first time she finds something you don't want her to see. <laughs> Sports Illustrated. You know what? Don't worry, I got the heavy ones. Dear Mr. Brian Boitano. Oh, God! 
She doesn't dump your wussy ass after that. <laughs> then comes the big one. Right. Three minutes in and we're already six months later going to propose. Six months. Ugh. I don't know. I would say longer. Always date longer. Today to Always celebrate his, our her 30 anniversary. Beautiful daughters, Sadie and Lindsay, who has moved back home with us. <laughs> and then there's Carlisle, Sadie's best friend, who used to take baths with what? Sadie. Best friend. Dad, uh, what about, <laughs> what about Ben? Oh, no, no, no. What about Ben? Oh, what about Bob? We will eventually review What About Bob. Excuse me, could I have everyone's attention, please? Um, uh oh. Well, I thought bad I move, gathered, dude. Gathered already. Don't do it. No. <laughs> I just want to know if you would spend the rest of your life with me. No. Whoa! Whoa! Wait a second. You choose our 30th wedding anniversary to propose to my daughter? <laughs> Whoops. Um. Well, we couldn't be happier. <laughs> see, see, I was thinking, um, I think we should have the wedding somewhere tropical. I was thinking, like, the Caribbean. I have this one thing. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. At St. Augustine's, yeah. it's this fantasy I've had since I was a little girl. It's the church where John and I got married. And where Sadie was christened by Reverend Frank, who's known the family forever. More importantly, it's the church Sadie's grandfather built. Wow. Wow. Her dead, Her dead grandfather. <laughs> All he built was a door after it was stolen. How would you know? You weren't even married there, and I think we all know how that marriage turned out. Ouch. <laughs> We're gonna be really late. Here's the door Grandpa built. Wow, he does really good work. So, yeah, they're just walking in. There's a really old book. What's that? Jesus, you scared me. Jesus didn't scare you. I did. This kid was really popular Jesus back in the day, but, you know. Reverend Frank is everywhere. Follow me. Whoa, okay. Forever and Frank is everywhere. Dear L Magazine, I just found out that my husband of three months is cheating on me with my best friend. <laughs> half of me wants to kill him, the other half wants to salvage my marriage. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> he's saying this in a bunch of kids. Oh, he's playing uh, Family Feud. What if I'm cheating with a woman who's really, really ugly? Does that make it all right? <laughs> She's really, really ugly. <laughs> Starts with covening, ends with the clap. Okay. <laughs> Make your two moms proud. Oh. Come on, Manny, you can murder this one. <laughs> Come on, kid. Take a stab at it. Right. Thou shall not kill. Bingo. Be chill, don't kill. Okay. I'm so sorry I haven't been around for the last, like... Ten years. <laughs> Wow, okay. That happens a lot. Oh, please, please. You go away to a liberal college, you have a bisexual roommate, you forget about God, don't sweat him. He doesn't forget about you. <laughs> All right, let's get the flock out of here. Come on. Get the flock out of here. How long about... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and with the Pope. And President Clinton. <laughs> President Bush. <laughs> wow. Next available date is in two years. Well, two years. So long. Yeah. Whew, yeah, that's pretty long. Hold on, hold on. Isn't there a cancellation? Look at that. No. There, there. Three weeks from tomorrow. How's that? <laughs> Three weeks from tomorrow. I mean, if you decided to get married, you should be ready to do it pretty quick. One small thing. A couple of years ago, I instituted a marriage preparation course here. The courses are prerequisite for any and all marriage ceremonies performed at these grounds. Those are actually really good to go to. At the end of the course, if I feel you're unprepared, or you stop the course before completion, I have the right to call off the wedding. Hmm, that's fair. I'm sorry, but this isn't mandatory, right? I mean, oh, it's mandatory. Let's just say we strongly advise it. In other words, you have no choice. <laughs> I'm sorry, who are you again? 
I'm part of the Ministers of Tomorrow program. <laughs> Reverend Frank has a 100% success rate for those that make it through the course. For people who make it through. And if they don't, they get divorced anyways after they get married, probably, is what I'm thinking. You each have to write your own vows. You have a little booklet in there. And you only get to share these vows with each other at the ceremony. What's rule number two? Starting immediately, no sex until the honeymoon. You serious? <laughs> <laughs> that kid is. Uh, I'm surprised he wasn't in more movies. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Damn it, Joel! What is wrong with you? <laughs> I heard that. That's heard Kelly. That. All I know is that's my wife. Apparently, those are my kids. <laughs> this is my beer. Everything else is pretty much a blur. <laughs> Please, God, let somebody, anybody be later than us. Hey, we'll just sneak in the back. No one will notice. Whoa! Look who decided to show. <laughs> oh, don't you hate that? Yeah, they don't actually do this at most churches. I've never been to a church that does this, so it's not. All right, guys, we took a little break, and it is bubbling now. So we are going to take our little spoon and give it a little mix-up. Make sure that you get to the bottom as you mix it. Mix up the mushrooms and all that stuff. So that is cool. We're going to let it keep going like this to get away all this liquid and it'll boil off. Just make sure that every few minutes you come over and give it a good mix up. So let's jump back into the movie. Okay guys, so we are going to let that cook a little bit more. It is getting nice and soft. We just want it to cook through. I'll check it here in another few minutes. Um, we are going to have some one-on-one -on -one time with pastor here so let's jump into it back up okay yeah what are you a little girl softball league back up, back up. <laughs> a little one-on-one -on -one time with your spiritual elder bless you benjamin Gerard? oh should not have called him elder correct me if i'm wrong first thing you like about her is her looks no, no, but you really think she's a cute control freak? Whoa! <laughs> Get that. Oh, but you use the word organized, which all guys know is code for OCD. OCD is not. God. OCD. <gasps> is not oh. God. Whoa. Wow. Oh my lord. No, no, I'm gonna have to heal you. It's healing time. Stay down there. Stay down. Well, it's healing time. <laughs> it's healing time. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, surround him with your light and grace. Lord, have mercy. The power of Christ compels you. Lord, I go wrestling from always healing time. Pray. We have got to pray. Pray. We have got to pray to make it through the day. <laughs> Is that MC Hammer? <laughs> You're here, right? Let me see. Let me see. No, it's still bleeding. Oh, I was called old school in nominee part three, filia spirit. <laughs> it's a miracle! Oh, it it's is! It's a miracle! It is! No, oh, you're not healed. I'm not a doctor, I'm a pastor. Come on. <laughs> the nasal septum and contra are clear. Yeah. Good news, kid. Your nose is fine. Yeah, come on, let me buy you a Coke. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Yeah, you know, I had to try that stuff. It never works, but. <laughs> All right, well, well, what have had? Yeah. Okay, guys, so the meal just clicked up to keep warm. I'm going to go unplug it. Um, it should be a little bit liquidy as time goes by. Um, when you pour it out, it's not going to be so much liquidy as it will be kind of a gooey texture, which isn't bad. Um, I'm going to go turn it off real quick though, and then we will come back with maybe a bowl of it, and I will show you what it looks like. So stay right there. I'm going to go deal with that. Make sure you turn it off because you don't want it to burn. Mix it up real good. Pour it into a bowl. All right, guys, and this is what it looks like after it has been done cooking. Um, and there's a little bit of water liquid still in there, as you can kind of see. 
it is still piping hot so I don't want to get too close to it but if you see it there's a little bit of liquid still down in there but I'm gonna give it a try and see I have some over here and uh, see how it tastes so while I do that let's see how it tastes sorry about the wiggling it's hard to do this one-handed oh and that's perfect no it's really perfect you guys now again Uncle Roger would say give the rice a day to absorb all that excess liquid that is down in there you could either eat this now or you could give it a day reheat it personally I'm going to eat it now but again because it makes so much I am going to eat it over the next course of a couple of days so with that being said guys let's get back to our dinner and a movie we got our dinner now let's jump back into the movie all right guys so i have the rice peel off done here i will try and put the recipe in the uh description below speaking of the description if you guys want to donate to this video making thing that i do i am a one man thing it says mike w productions i am mike w as you know but um this is just me watching movies entertaining you guys hopefully uh i decided to do this because i know a lot of you want to do something special but you might not have a budget a big budget in terms of money we have no money and uh, to be honest flowers and candy for some are nice and others it's kind of boring so that's fair i guess but this is what it looks like now uncle roger would say um go ahead and give it a day put it in the fridge after the pot cools of course and give it a day so it absorbs all of the ooey gooey-ness and uh becomes uh congealed to a good portion personally i'm going to be eating this over the course of a couple of days so i'm going to eat mine now while we watch the video so yeah you're going to see me eat a little bit here and there while we watch the movie so let's jump back in it oh they're meeting at a bar okay he is from the office as well oh the kid's gonna go looks like he's all dressed in black sneaking into an apartment building <laughs> looks like he learned a little bit more at that minister school He's bugging them. Tonight, we learn how to fight fairly. Um, sorry. What if we've never had a fight before? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Instant argument potential. What do you do? How do you handle it? I think we probably just call triple A. Instant argument potential. What do you do? How do you handle it? I think we probably just call triple A. <laughs> <laughs> Out of cell phone range. Can't use a cell phone. Can't call triple A. You gotta handle it the old-fashioned way. Hands on. You gotta change the tire. You're pissed at each other. Oh boy. Cut. You guys travel medicated? I mean, that was like Prozac takes a vacation. <laughs> wow. Do you guys travel medicated? That's not exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Janine, why don't you and Jimbo show them how this argument should play out? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, well, if we hadn't left three hours late because someone was talking to her ball-busting mother on the phone... <laughs> Roll reversal! All right. Sadie, I want you to be Ben. Ben, I want you to be Sadie. Come on, step up there. Come on. Never a good thing. But kind of a good thing if you're doing marriage counseling. You know what, Ben? Maybe we wouldn't have gotten lost if you had just followed the triptych that I prepared three days in advance. Wow. Going with the flow as usual. <laughs> 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 well, I'm not really sure how anything gets done if people aren't following my very specific instructions. <laughs> <laughs> ben, don't you know that that's the only way things get done around here? Oh. That's how things get done around here? Good. I had no idea how things got done around here. <laughs> he said counterclockwise. I'm in charge. I can I got do it. it. I have it under. Oh. 
Oh. Dear Jesus. Potato skins down! Yeah. <laughs> Potato skins down. Okay, uh, we'll pick up next week with uh, balancing the joint checking account. That is actually good to no. know. Balancing that joint checking account. Actually, just balancing your own checking account is good to know. Ben, he's not intrusive. You know, he's just observing our relationship right now. Oh. Like a voyeur. Reverend Frank, it's not like a voyeur. <laughs> Technically, he's spying on you right now, so, you know. No. Yes, I want to pass the course. So... So, I also want to play Pickle Me Tickle Me with my really hot fiancé. <laughs> Three weeks never killed anyone. Really? Has that ever been documented? <laughs> Your optimism is touching. They remind me of the Anderson couple we had last month. Yeah. Oof. You know what time it is? Time to turn up the heat. So they kind of do this on purpose. Give them a month. Kind of cram them in. I don't think they really had a booking issue. I think they wanted to test them. So he's like a high school coach. Take. Hey, man, listen to me. Once a woman senses she has control, she'll tell a thousand of her friends. Then they'll want control too. Mm -hmm. A little piece of this control stuff. Next thing you know, they'll be like running companies and having their own offices. Like they already do. Wait for what? Welcome to St. Catherine's Maternity. <laughs> Wanda Sykes. She's pretty funny ish. Woman in labor basically lies around almost naked while dozens of doctors and nurses get a front row view of her wide open. Virginia, put some gloves on those hands right now. <laughs> of course, there's always drugs, so you should figure out how you feel about that beforehand. <laughs> and then be ready to toss that decision right out the window when the pain really kicks in. <laughs> Ow! Woman in labor wouldn't even feel that. <laughs> Good to know. Ooh. All that. Wow. This way. What happened to that do no harm thing? Or is that just with doctors? How many do you want to have? Four? Two? Oof. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that you really want to figure out before you start talking about getting married. Say for a man to experience the equivalent level of pain, you'd have to pull your scrotum over your head. Oh. Oh. Now the real fun begins. Welcome to the world of parenting. Oh, God. Oh, Breathe, oh, blink, no. and cry. They're all yours. Congratulations. You've just had twins. Ugly babies, man. <laughs> yeah, some schools get something like this, where uh, the classmates all have to take care of one of these little, like, robot dolls. They're programmed to go off at certain times, wake you up and do this kind of stuff. And you gotta figure out if they need changing, if they need food, they just want attention. Oh, oh my god! Oh. god. <laughs> he has allergies, apparently. I think they're changing their mind on kids, maybe. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Shelly's dad fell off a ladder. What? Yeah. And unfortunately, he's gonna make it. So we have to go down to the hospital and you are on Brat Patrol for a couple of hours. The computer instantly logs it in our registry database for your guests to consider. Wow. Oh, and there's no limit to how many items I can choose? When in doubt, stop it. Great. It's easy to shop when somebody else is buying your stuff. Guys, 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 slow down, slow down. <laughs> yes, having kids on a leash is technically a good idea. They will not get away from you. <laughs> DVD player, TVs. Oh. <laughs> the, kid, the kid's hitting the underwear. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. This must be like a mall common changing room. Uh, usually they have a family room, but I don't know why this is just open. If you have one of these in your town, let me know. It's kind of weird because usually it's, you know, oh, toothpaste. I'm hoping that's toothpaste. Yeah, okay. Uh, I've never seen a baby changing area before in a mall or a store. Stop! Ah, 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 ah. Stop! Stop! 
<laughs> oh, and look, it's our favorite little spy. Oh, meltdown mode for the little little babies. Oh, no, don't do that. Oh, I'm assuming this is what it's like to have kids, so, you know. Don't shake the baby. It's a doll, but jeez, don't shake him. Shut up! <laughs> oh, don't do that. Oh my gosh. Hey! Oh, I'm sorry. What the hell are you doing? Oh, thank God. These are fake. Watch. Ah! See? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Macy's got bended. Freaking public nuisance. And the baby freaked out. <laughs> Why are there 56 bras on here? <laughs> oh jeez, they look the same. His girlfriend looks the same. <coughs> looks the same. That's creepy. He plays on uh, NCIS or NCIS LA. Every time I hear the word Jesus, I'm in. <laughs> Praise Buddha. Okay, okay. You look fabulous. Oh, thank you. How is life after the big D? Wow. You know a great way around new family awkwardness? Word association. Hmm. One word to describe grandma. Don't do it. Uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Excellent. Peculiar for his age. <laughs> These are never good games to play, to be honest. Take a shot at that. Oh, no. What about a uh, pomper? <laughs> Do we have any problems here, folks? I don't think so, because if we did, we'd just throw some money at it, because Ooh. we all know there's nothing money can't buy. What are you doing? What was that? Something that's very against the rules. Mayday. <laughs> and the pastor's spying on them. Hi. Just in the neighborhood, uh... <laughs> I, uh... Hi. I won't overstay my welcome. You already have. Talking about sex, does that make you uncomfortable, Ben? A little bit. No, I'm not uncomfortable talking about sex. <laughs> Having you in my living room talking about sex, that makes me a little uncomfortable. Oh. Right. Hey, one little exercise, then I'm already 5,000, okay? <laughs> ben. Already 5,000. I really like it when Reverend Frank doesn't interrupt us before sex. I'm glad I got Because <laughs> I love it when you oh, take control. Oh. It's so sexy. What do you like about that? Okay! <laughs> That's enough of that! <laughs> Well, all I'm saying is, I can't believe you were talking to him like that. <laughs> oh, excuse me! I can't believe the first man to actually ask me what I like in bed was my minister. That's fair. Oh, he found the, the bug. <laughs> you think she's gonna believe her sweet Reverend Crank is bugging your bedroom? Of course she would. <laughs> right. We have to find his deepest, darkest secret and take him down. <laughs> I know you're gonna find something you like. She's from the office too. Never more to part. Yeah, that won't backfire on you. Can't really have that song on here. Uh oh, she's cheating. He's supposed to be writing his vows and. Oh, look at that, a little... <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi. I'm just here to pick up my rings. I'm sorry, does that say never to fart? <laughs> we get pretty strange requests here. <laughs> what would you call the letter between the fingers that I'm pointing at right there? What is that? An F? I'm sorry, sir? Uh, an Could F? I Louder, please? F? <laughs> Never to fart. You're gonna have some very bad stomach pains if you can't release that. So, so I'm spending two hundred and fifty dollars on something I asked you to do in the first place, and we can guarantee that. <laughs> and we can guarantee that. What is that? Frank Littleton. That's his address. Hmm. But who's Maria Gonzalez? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not suspicious whatsoever. The rehearsal's tomorrow. You've only got today to blow the lid off this thing, all right? It's your only chance. Strike first, strike hard. No mercy. Strike first, strike hard. No mercy, sir. I can't 
hear you. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy, sir. <laughs> Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> Aha, he found the file. Oh, nice. Marriage license, okay. I got you, sucker MC. And he had a divorce. And that is a dog with a uh, priest collar. <laughs> oh. Well, at least he's kind of a nice dog, though. <laughs> he got the Cheetos. <laughs> this is good. Things are really good. And I'm not even concerned with the fact that Ben hasn't written his vows yet. Really? <laughs> yeah, well, it's probably because he was too busy sleeping with our dental hygienist, which was great. Wait, right, but your hygienist is a guy, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> They don't make them like this anymore. When two people say I do, they're putting their lives in each other's hands entirely. So they're putting doing their student lives. driving. The last test you have to pass before I certify you ready for marriage is the communication test, mm. which is very important given how poorly we've been doing in that area lately. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm not doing anything, Ben Murphy. You are. You're going to be Sadie's eyes as she drives us through town. You're insane! This is highly illegal. Do not do this at home. I repeat, do not do this. <laughs> Even though he's in full control because there's two sets of controls, but still, no. What are you worried about here? There's two sets of controls. If something goes wrong, I can take over at any time. But still, not a good idea. I mean, when you're blindfolded, you might as well go slow. So you don't kill anyone. Oh, no. <laughs> And the Wilhelm scream. The Wilhelm scream was from uh, Star Wars. Well, you might want to pick up speed a little bit, huh? Wait, wait, why would we do that? Oh, because there's a parking space up there. I don't want to lose it. Got it, Sadie! Wow. <laughs> well, you have the wedding processional. You can go traditional with Mendelssohn's wedding march, or one couple actually had Captain and Tennille here playing muskrat love. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> Ben, where are your vows? Carlisle, what crystal should we use? What brand of cheese is good, Carlisle? God, I am so sick of you choosing Carlisle's cheese. Carlisle's cheese, why don't you explore that, Ben? You know what? Ben? Stop. Enough of the pop psychology reference. Oh. <laughs> so, Frankie, should I tell them or should you? <laughs> what do you want me to tell them, Benjamin? What I want you to tell them is what they're good and decent and ever so intuitive Reverend was doing when he married and then subsequently divorced one Maria Gonzalez. <laughs> That's not true. I didn't want to have to talk about this to protect certain parties, but if she was deported back to Guatemala, she would have faced most certain death. Right. So in order for her and her children to stay in this country, I agreed to marry her so she could get a green card. <laughs> I keep their pictures in my wallet. <laughs> oh, boy. Remind me. One person he screwed up. Mountable odds. That's that's Pablo right there. Ben, if you had just spent half the amount of time on your wedding vows as this stupid little investigation, we would probably be walking down the aisle tomorrow. And no, no, I can't do it. That's why we do it. Find the truth, Benjamin. Sometimes. Oh! Ouch. You punched the Reverend? What is wrong with you? <laughs> You're going to hell. <laughs> wow. Three weeks. That's a new course record. Man, I haven't seen a right hook like that since the Buffalini meltdown. I hate this part. So, I'm assuming that most of his people don't get this far. See you, kiddo. You know. Maybe Ben wasn't the only... <laughs> no, no, what, what? No, have a great trip. Maybe Ben wasn't the only one at fault. Now she's using her honeymoon ticket without me. Well... I mean, how is that supposed to make me feel? <laughs> Not good. I 
And you got to be the worst advice giver I know. I mean, not only is your advice terrible, but it just backfires at every turn. <laughs> I mean, I don't need anybody telling me how to go. <laughs> I don't need anyone telling me. Wait. Air Jamaica. And he's at the hotel that she's at, apparently. Trying to call her. Listen, I'm going to support you in whatever you do here, but you got to think about this from Ben's perspective. How do you think he feels when you're always coming to me for answers? I don't go to you all the time. But when are you going to him? He's right. It'll come to you. Have faith. Mm. Thank you, Reverend Frank. Right on schedule. <laughs> oh, and they're on the plane. That was that was uh, cropped in really good. So he's going there because he kind of knows what's going down. Hey, can you do me a favor? <laughs> uh, sure. You should come to your window. That's not creepy whatsoever. That, that is too, like, perfectly edged out for that to be him doing that by himself. Like, you do not get a cut, like, that evenly straight doing that by, like, hand or foot. And they brought the doors. Again, I don't know if this is a copywritten song. Um, so, yeah, that is the movie... I believe that ends it, goes into somewhat of a um, montage of the bloopers and stuff. You'll have to get your own copy for that because I'm not going to show that here. Just because it's not worth having to cut a bunch out uh, for copyright. So, with that being said, guys, they are having their uh, wedding party and that is it. So, let's talk about it. Alright guys, so that is the License to Wed, and it is a very funny movie. Um, if you guys find it, um, it's probably in the $5 bin, or you can find it online fairly cheap, I'm sure. Um, yeah, we have a lot of things that happened in the movie. Some of my favorites were obviously the crazy baby robot things. Uh, that was really creepy. Uh, if you look at them, they kind of do look like Reverend Frank, a.k.a. Robin Williams. John Krasinski, really funny. Mandy Moore did a solid job. And of course, our man, Reverend Frank, a.k.a. Robin Williams. Big big props to him and his assistant uh the little kid was good again he popped up here and there in the early ish um uh 2000s so um i'm kind of wondering why he kind of stepped out of uh movie making but you know that's neither here nor there maybe he'll pop up uh, the other one that I like him in is The Greatest Game Ever Played with Shia LaBeouf. That was right after Shia LaBeouf, pretty much a few years after he got done with the Even Stevens. He played a young caddy in that one, and that was another good role. I hope now that he is um, past his teen years that he will uh, try and come back into the spotlight of acting or at least do whatever he feels like he should do. Um, yeah, the babies were really creepy. The acting was good. <clears throat> there is some Office alum in the movie, as first airy being, you know, John Krasinski, and secondaries being the other few people that you would see in the movie as well. Very fun movie. Um... It is one of my favorite comedies. I have a few others that I do like uh, just as much. 
but this one for this time of year being a rom-com and it being you know almost valentine's day this is one of the better ones to watch so with that being said guys i hopefully i hope you liked this review i hope you guys will give this review a thumbs up and if not go ahead and give it a thumbs down because that's fair and nobody sees it anyways nowadays um, if you guys want to hit that little subscribe button, it should be popping up right down here somewhere. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. And if you guys want to watch another video, I will have something popping up for you right up here. Thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you for getting this far in the video. And we will see you, of course, next time. Peace.